Early modern English is the stage of the English language used from the beginning of the Tudor period until the English Interregnum and Restoration, or from the transition from Middle English in the late 15th century to the transition to modern English during the mid to late 17th century. Prior to and following the accession of James I to the English throne in 1603, the emerging English standard began to influence the spoken and written Middle Scots of Scotland. Modern readers of English are generally able to understand texts written in the late phase of the early modern English period, while texts from the earlier phase may present more difficulties. The early modern English of the early 17th century forms the base of the grammatical and orthographical conventions that survive in modern English. History English Renaissance transition from Middle English The change from Middle English to early modern English was not just a matter of vocabulary or pronunciation changing, it was the beginning of a new era in the history of English an era of linguistic change in a language with large variations in dialect was replaced by a new era of a more standardized language with a richer lexicon and an established literature. 1476 William Caxton starts printing in Westminster, however, the language he uses reflects the variety of styles and dialects used by the authors who originally wrote the material. Tudor period, English Renaissance Caxton publishes Thomas Mallory's La Morte de Arthur, the first print bestseller in English. Mallory's language, while archaic in some respects, is clearly early modern, possibly a Yorkshire or Midlands dialect. 1491 or 1492 Richard Pinson starts printing in London. His style tends to prefer Chancery Standard, the form of English used by government. Henry VIII c. 1509 Pinson becomes the king's official printer. From 1525 publication of William Tyndale's Bible translation. This Bible is read to congregations regularly in churches, familiarizing much of the population of England with a standard form of the language. 1549 Publication of the first Book of Common Prayer in English under the supervision of Thomas Cranmer. This book standardizes much of the wording of church services. Some have argued that, since attendance at prayer book services was required by law for many years, the repetitive use of the language of the prayer book helped to standardize modern English to a degree greater than even that of the authorized Bible. 1557 Publication of Tottles Miscellany Elizabethan English Elizabethan era Christopher Marlowe, Florida 1586 to 1593 1592 The Spanish Tragedy by Thomas Kidd C 1590 to C 1612 Shakespeare's plays written 17th century Jacobean and Caroline eras Jacobean era 1609 Shakespeare's sonnets published other playwrights Ben Johnson, Thomas Decker, Beaumont and Fletcher, John Webster. 1607 The first successful permanent English colony in the New World, Jamestown, is established in Virginia. Early vocabulary specific to American English loaned from indigenous languages. 1611 The King James Bible is published largely based on Tyndale's translation. It remains the standard Bible in the Church of England for many years. 1623 Shakespeare's first folio published. Caroline era and English Civil War 1647 publication of the first Beaumont and Fletcher folio. Interregnum and Restoration The period of the English Civil War and the Interregnum was one of social and political upheaval and instability. The dates for Restoration literature are a matter of convention, and they differ markedly from genre to genre. Thus, the restoration in drama may last until 1700, while in poetry it may last only until 1666. The Annus Mirabilis, and in prose it might end in 1688. With the increasing tensions over succession and the corresponding rise in journalism and periodicals, or not until 1700, when those periodicals grew more stabilized. 1651 Publication of Leviathan by Thomas Hobbes 1662 New edition of the Book of Common Prayer, largely based on the 1549 and subsequent editions. 
This also long remains a standard work in English. 1667 Publication of Paradise Lost by John Milton and Avanus Mirabilis by John Dryden Development to modern English The 17th century port towns gained influence over the old county towns. England experienced a new period of internal peace and relative stability, encouraging the arts including literature from around the 1690s onwards. Modern English can be taken to have emerged fully by the beginning of the Georgian era in 1714, although English orthography remained somewhat fluid until the publication of Johnson's A Dictionary of the English Language in 1755. The towering importance of William Shakespeare over the other Elizabethan authors was the result of his reception during the 17th and 18th century, directly contributing to the development of standard English. As a consequence, Shakespeare's plays are familiar and comprehensible today, 400 years after they were written. But the works of Geoffrey Chaucer and William Langland, written only 200 years earlier, are considerably more difficult for the average reader. Orthography The orthography of early modern English was fairly similar to that of today, but spelling was unstable. Early modern English as well as modern English inherited orthographical conventions predating the Great Vowel Shift. The early modern English spelling system was similar to that of Middle English. Certain changes were made, however, sometimes for reasons of etymology. Early modern English orthography had a number of features of spelling that have not been retained. The letter S had two distinct lowercase forms. S is used today, and the short S was always used at the end of a word, and many times in other parts of the word, and the long S, if used, could appear anywhere except at the end. The double lowercase s was variously written, s, or ss. This is similar to the alternation between medial and final lowercase sigma in Greek. U and V were not yet considered two distinct letters, but different forms of the same letter. Typographically, V was frequently used at the start of a word and U elsewhere, hence VNM wed and LU. The modern convention of using U for the vowel sound and V for the consonant appears to have been introduced in the 1630s. Also, W was frequently represented by VV. Similarly, I and J were also not yet considered two distinct letters, but different forms of the same letter. Hence IOY for joy and IUST for just. Again, the custom of using I as a vowel and J as a consonant is first found in the 1630s. The letter TH was still in use during the early modern English period, though increasingly limited to handwritten texts. In print, TH was often represented by Y. A silent E was often appended to words. The last consonant was sometimes doubled when this E was appended, hence peak, cowarder, man, runner. The sound was often written O, hence om of plomb. The final syllable of words like public was variously spelt but came to be standardized as ik. The modern speakings with IC did not come into use until the mid-18th century. Much was not standard, however, for example, the word he could be spelled he or he in the same sentence as it is found in Shakespeare's plays. Phonology Consonants Most consonant sounds of early modern English have survived into present-day English, however, there are still a few notable differences in pronunciation. Today's silent consonants found in the consonant clusters of such words as not, nat, Sword were still fully pronounced up until the middle or end of the 16th century, but were fully reduced by the early 17th century at the latest. The silent L of wood and should, for example, may have even persisted up until the year 1700 in Britain, and perhaps several decades longer in the British American colonies. The American language second ed. p. 71. Most words with the spelling wh, such as what, where, and whale, were still pronounced rather than w. This means, for example, that wine and wine were not perfect homophones, as they are today in most varieties of English. In early modern English, the precise nature of the typical r consonant remains unclear, however, it was certainly one of the following. 
the R heard in most present-day varieties of English. The trilled or rolled R, R, the retroflex R, R. In early modern English, the precise nature of the dark and light variants of the L consonant L and L, respectively, remains unclear. It is possible that both existed, as they largely do today. Word final ang, as in sing, was still pronounced n up until the end of the 16th century during which it began to coalesce into its more typically modern pronunciation of n. Pure vowels and diphthongs The following information primarily comes from studies of the great vowel shift. See the related chart. The modern English phoneme I, a, as in glide, rhyme, and sight, was I, and later a, I, a, as in now, out, and plowed, was u tilde e, I, a, as in cab, trap, and sap, was probably the same as today, I, as in fed, elm, and hen, was probably the same as today, or perhaps a slightly higher, sometimes approaching, I, e, as in name, case, and sake was and later, this phoneme was just beginning or already in the process of merging with the phoneme I as in day, pay, and say. At the time, words such as let and late were near homophones. I, I, as in C, B, and meet, was probably the same as today, however, this had not yet merged with the phoneme represented by the speakings each or a, as in east, meal, or feet, which was pronounced e, i, as in bib, pin, and thick, was probably the same as today, however it also was the pronunciation of the unstressed ending vowel sounds of money, holy, etc. I, O, as in stone, bowed, and yoke, was O, or O. This phoneme was probably just beginning the process of merging with the phoneme, ow, as in grow, no, and mo, without yet achieving today's complete merger. I, as in rot, top, and pot, was or I, as in taught, taught, and law, was or I, as in boy, choice, and toy, is less clear than other vowels. By the end of the 16th century, the similar but distinct phonemes I and E all existed. By the end of the 17th century, only still remained of these three, because these phonemes were in such a state of flux during the whole early modern period. Scholars often assume only the most neutral possibility for the pronunciation of as well as its similar phonemes in early modern English. E, I, and I, had not yet split, and were, instead, both pronounced in the vicinity of, I, U, was approximately the same as today, however, it incorporated not just words like food, moon, and stool, but all words with the eerie spelling, including blood, cook, and foot, just beginning or already in the process of approximating the early modern English, and later, this phonological split among the eerie words has been called early shortening by modern phonologists, or U occurred in words spelled with U or U, such as Jew and Jew. This phoneme only remains in Welsh English and other conservative dialects. In most dialects of modern English, it became Jew and U through yod dropping. Rhotic vowels The precise nature of early modern English rhotic vowels is somewhat ambiguous. Although it is clear that the R sound was probably always pronounced following vowel sounds. Furthermore, and were not necessarily merged before R, as they are in most modern English dialects. Grammar. Pronouns Early modern English has two second person personal pronouns. Thou, the informal singular pronoun, and ye, both the plural pronoun and the formal singular pronoun. Thou was already falling out of use in the early modern English period. It rarely remains in customary use in modern standard English. Only for certain solemn occasions, such as addressing inferiors, while it may remain in regular use in particular regional English dialects. The translators of the King James Version of the Holy Bible intentionally preserved in early modern English. Archaic pronouns and verb endings that had already begun to fall out of spoken use. This enabled the English translators to convey the distinction between the first, second and third person singular and plural verb forms of the original Hebrew and Greek sources. 
Like other personal pronouns, thou and ye have different forms dependent on the grammatical case, specifically, the objective form of thou is thee, its possessive forms are thy and thine, and its reflexive or emphatic form is thyself, the objective form of ye was you, its possessive forms are your and yours, and its reflexive or emphatic forms are yourself and yourselves. My and thy become mine and thine before words beginning with a vowel or the letter H. More accurately, the older forms mine and thine had become my and thy before words beginning with a consonant other than H, while mine and thine were retained before words beginning with a vowel or H, as in mine eyes or thine hand. Carrot a b the genitives my, mine, thy, and thine are used as possessive adjectives before a noun, or as possessive pronouns without a noun. All four forms are used as possessive adjectives. Mine and thine are used before nouns beginning in a vowel sound, or before nouns beginning in the letter h, which was usually silent and my and thy before consonants. However, only mine and thine are used as possessive pronouns, as in it is thine and they were mine. Carrot a b from the early early modern English period up until the 17th century. His was the possessive of the third person neuter it as well as of the third person masculine he. Genitive it appears once in the 1611 King James Bible as groweth of it own a record. The third person singular present lost its alternate inflections. Th became obsolete while S survived. The plural present form became uninflected. Present plurals had been marked with N, Th or S. Mark present plurals were rare throughout the early modern period, though, and N was probably only used as a stylistic affectation to indicate rural or old-fashioned speech. The second person singular was marked in both the present and past tenses with Saint or Est. Since the indicative past was not otherwise marked for person or number, the loss of thou made the past subjunctive indistinguishable from the indicative past for all verbs except to be. Modal auxiliaries The modal auxiliaries cemented their distinctive syntactical characteristics during the early modern period. Thus, the use of modals without an infinitive became rare. The use of modals present participles to indicate aspect and of their preterite forms to indicate tense also became uncommon. Some verbs ceased to function as modals during the early modern period. The present form of must, mo, became obsolete. Dare also lost the syntactical characteristics of a modal auxiliary, evolving a new past form distinct from the modal dust. Perfect and progressive forms The perfect of the verbs had not yet been standardized to use uniformly the auxiliary verb to have. Some took as their auxiliary verb to be, as in this example from the King James Bible, but which of you will say unto him, when he is come from the field, go and sit down, Luke 17, 7. The rules that determined which verbs took which auxiliaries were similar to those still observed in German and French. The modern syntax used for the progressive aspect became dominant by the end of the early modern period, but other forms were also common. These included the prefixer and the infinitive paired with do. Moreover, the to be plus ing verb form could be used to express a passive meaning without any additional markers. The house is building, could mean, the house is being built, vocabulary. A number of words which remained in common use in modern English have undergone semantic narrowing. Use of the verb, to suffer, in the sense of, to allow, survived into early modern English. As in the phrase, suffer the little children, of the King James Bible, but has mostly been lost in modern English.